हरे कृष्ण महाराज हरे कृष्ण महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ऑल ऑल ग्लोरीज ग्लोरीज टू यू महाराज थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग एंड गिविंग योर एसोसिएशन टुडेज वर्स इज महाराज सेवेंथ कैंटो सिक्स चैप्टर ट्वेंटी फोर्थ वर्स महाराज ओवर टू यू महाराज वेन एवर यू आर रेडी प्लीज टेक ओवर हरे कृष्ण तस्मात्वर्षभुमुच Therefore, my dear young friends of demons, please act in such a way that the Supreme Lord, who is beyond the conception of material knowledge, will be satisfied. Give up your demoniac nature and act without enmity or duality. Show mercy to all living entities by enlightening them in devotional service, thus becoming. Their well wishing. The Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita, eighteen fifty-five, "Bhakti mama bijananti, yavani aschasvi tatvataha." One can understand the supreme personality of God if he is his only by devotional service. For Lord Maharaj ultimately instructed his class friends, the sons of demons. To accept the process of devotional service by preaching the science of Krishna consciousness to everyone, preaching is the best service to the Lord. The Lord will immediately be extremely satisfied with one who engages in this service of preaching Krishna consciousness. This is confirmed by the Lord Himself in Bhagavad Gita, eighteen sixty nine, Nachatasman Manushe Su Kastid May Priya. Pitamaha. There is no servant more dear, nor will there be one more dear. If one sincerely tries his best to spread Krishna consciousness by preaching the glories of the Lord and His supremacy, even if he is imperfectly educated, he can become the dear most servant of the supreme personality of Godhead. This is bhakti. As one performs this service for humanity without discrimination between friends and enemies, the Lord becomes satisfied, and the mission of one's life is fulfilled. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore advised everyone to become a guru devotee and preach Krishna consciousness. Yadi Deke Tare Kaha Krishna Padesh. That is the easiest way to realize the supreme personality of Godhead. By such preaching, the preacher becomes satisfied, and those to whom he preaches are also satisfied. This is the process of bringing peace and tranquility to the entire world. Bhaktaram yagyatapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhidam sarva bhutanam yantam mam shantam rachjiti. One is expected to. Understand these three formulas of knowledge concerning the Supreme Lord: that He is the supreme enjoyer, that He is the proprietor of everything, and that He is the best well-wisher and friend of everyone. A preacher should personally understand these truths and preach them to everyone. Then there will be peace and tranquility over the world. The word "salary" dumb friendliness. Is significant in this verse. People are generally ignorant of Krishna consciousness, and therefore, to become their best well wisher, one should teach them about Krishna consciousness without discrimination. Since the Supreme Lord Vishnu is situated in the core of everyone's heart, everybody is the temple of Vishnu. One should not misuse this understanding as an excuse for such words as Dridya Narayan. If Narayan lives in the house of a Deridya, 
a poor man, this doesn't mean that Narayan becomes poor. He lives everywhere, in the houses of the poor and those of the rich, but in all circumstance he remains Narayan. To think that he becomes either poor or rich is a material calculation. He is always side, sad Aishvarya Purnam, full in six opulences in all the circumstances. <clears throat> Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasavi Gaur, Bhakti Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> so, here is a very interesting verse and purport, because it comes to the purpose of the re why the Lord comes to the material world. The Lord comes to the material world to uplift the conditioned souls back the kingdom of God. And therefore, he comes in his different incarnations. And of course, the most recent is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself in the mood of his own devotee, teaching from the position of a devotee how to worship the Lord. <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come into this world for many reasons. And one of them is to spread the Yuga Dharma, which is the means for self-realization in this age. There are many forms of self-realization as taught by the scriptures in previous ages. But this particular age, the means are given by the Lord himself and taught by the Lord himself, as opposed to in previous ages, they were, they were, offered, they were taught by great souls who were worshipping the Lord. So in this age, the glorification of the Lord by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the means for self-realization. And therefore, anyone who chants the holy name should also develop a, the quality of attachment for chanting. In other words, one should develop the mood of chanting and the regular basis. <clears throat> chanting is not some activity that one performs when they get old and when they can't do any more physical activities. So they sit down and they chant. No, actually chanting is there from the very beginning of life <clears throat> because chanting will awaken one's natural uh, love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is the ultimate principle of success in life. <clears throat> and that is glorified throughout the scriptures in so many different ways, the importance of glorifying the Lord and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <clears throat> And so those who take up the chanting should also understand that there is a second part to the chanting, and that is to distribute that chanting to others. Uh, Krishna consciousness is made up of two aspects. <clears throat> that is to become Krishna conscious and to, dis to bring others to Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> There are two kinds of devotees, those who are only concerned with their own spiritual advancement and those who are concerned seeing the sufferings of the conditioned souls and the instructions given by the Lord to help awaken these conditioned souls to their actual benefit in life, Krishna consciousness. They become very in, uh, enthusiastic to, to distribute that same mercy which made them successful, that is, chanting of the holy name. So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in South India, he stopped at one place named, uh, what was it, uh, Kormashetra. 
And in that, at that time in Korma Shetra, he met one Brahmana. The Brahmana was, in, was somewhat attracted to Lord Chaitanya, and he invited Lord Chaitanya to take Prashadam and stay at his house while he was in Korma Shetra. And the Lord agreed because he could understand his Brahma was very pious, very religious, very humble, and had all good qualities. So he came, and for four days he stayed with the Brahmana. And he gave him much transcendental knowledge. And the Brahmana and his family served the Lord in so many ways to please the Lord. After four days, the Lord it was time for him to carry on in his travels. So he decided to leave. He made his his mission known and he departed the home. While he was leaving, the Korma Brahma was also following him from behind. The Lord became concerned and he turned around. He says, where are you? Where are you going? The Korma Brahma said, I'm coming with you. And the Lord said, how can you do that? You have your family, you have your responsibilities. He's, he completely dismissed what the Lord said and said, no, I cannot live without you. I, therefore, I have to come with you. I can be your assistant. I can travel with you and do many services. The Lord was not pleased with that at all. <clears throat> but he understood the mind of the Kurma Brahman. And so he told him, if you want to be with me, you can be with me, but not in this way. He said, if you, he said, by my command, be guru, save the land. He said, whoever you meet, tell them about devotion to Krishna. Whoever you meet, teach them to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He said, if you do that, he said, you will never lose my association and in due course of time you will again have my association as we are today the karma brahma realized the lord was determined and so he accepted those instructions and went back uh, with his family and that is a particular pastime here we see within this uh, particular verse here if you go down the purport and bring the purport down a little bit. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> Hare Krishna. Mataji, can you scroll down? Yes, ma yes, Maharaj, yes, Maharaj. You went too far. Go back up. <laughs> Maharaj. Okay, okay, stop there. Stop. So he says, therefore, he advised everyone to become guru and preach Yari Deke, Tari Krishna, Tari Kaha, Krishna Upades. That whoever you meet, tell them, give them the message of Krishna, Krishna Upades. <clears throat> so this is an instruction, not just for the Purma Brahman, but for all devotees in the ISKCON society to take this message as one's life and soul, to become Krishna conscious and to make others Krishna conscious. And as we read from the glories of this particular service, one becomes recognized by Krishna. <clears throat> it doesn't require great qualifications to preach. All one has to do is repeat the instructions of the Lord, the instructions given by the spiritual master to others. <clears throat> As Prabhupada mentions here, it doesn't require great amounts of education. Anyone can perform this service, but it has to be done <laughs> with a desire to uplift the conditioned souls. And so, therefore, preaching out of all of the services is, is the means by which this Krishna consciousness movement expands itself. As Lord, as Lord Chaitanya has said that uh, in every town and village, my name will be chanted. And so he has designated and empowered those who want to take up the preaching 
to be his representatives and to make that their goal in life as to there are many ways you can serve the Lord. But this is the most important because it is the way by which the entire Krishna conscious movement expands. We are not a church where we just sit down, we have our little congregation, and we sit around and we talk about God, and we uh, have nice food, and we go to, we do our rituals every once in a while and worship the Lord and go home, and everything is back to normal. That is not, Prabhupada called that churchianity. He, he discouraged us in a very strong way from falling into that category of simply being satisfied within the institution and the rules and regulations of performance. He said, our movement is a preaching movement. <laughs> and he wanted each and every devotee in the movement to, in one way or another, be an element of mercy and compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. <laughs> because people are suffering in this material world and they don't know why they're suffering. The reason why they're suffering is because they they have forgotten who they are and what is the actual goal of life. No matter how much people make arrangements to improve the material situation, it's not possible to improve the material situation because as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Maya Dakshina Prakriti, Suyate Satchirachira. I'm the controller. I am the what we say manifester of the of the material energy. Every the material energy works under my control. So no one can control the material energy to make it work for them to uh, in order to find greater amount of satisfaction and happiness in this world. Sometimes people do that as a way of life. In fact, that goes on as the way of life, trying to control the material energy to make it work in such a way as you can facilitate greater forms of satisfaction and happiness. But whatever temporary uh, success you may have will fall away in due course of time. And as it says, for every for every material happiness there is a concomitant form of suffering that eventually comes in due course of time <laughs> so no one can be happy in this material world unless they take to the goal of life which is krishna consciousness therefore the devotees of the lord because they are in knowledge and because they have received the mercy of the lord and because they have made their life perfect by entering onto the path of pure devotional service they uh, they see that, well, now what can I do to benefit others? Because the purpose of human life is paropaka. Paropaka is the Sanskrit word means to do good to others. So one, we do, we want to do good to others and we do, we do good to others in the form of our family and our friends. So our limited form of uh, compassion or concern is within the bodily concept of life. And we see, yes, family, friends, and as the people I focus on, because that's they're somewhat related to me because of the bodily connection. But on the spiritual level, every living entity is related because every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna and Krishna is the Supreme Father. He says that in the Bhagavad Gita, Hom Bija Pita Pita, that I am the seed giving father of all living entities. So one who takes up the business of the father by helping the other sons and daughters come to Krishna consciousness becomes very dear to the father because the father comes to this world to do the same thing. So one is assisting the Lord in his mission as they. And when he comes to the material world by preaching Krishna consciousness. Therefore, it says that no one is more dear, as it says in this verse, nor will anyone be more dear to me than one who sincerely tries to spread this message of Krishna consciousness. So here's a way to actually perfect our life um, 
in such a way that one becomes very, very much recognized by the Lord. Now, Srila Prabhupada says, if you get recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, imagine that. Think about that. God is so great, and he and there are un, there, there are unlimited, uncountless numbers of living entities. But if you get special recognition by that supreme great, how rare is that? That's very rare. God takes care of all living entities, but he only but he recognizes only those who really work to fulfill his uh, mission. Just like the father has so many sons and daughters in the family, and the love is equal by the father to all. But if the older son is very obedient to the father, then that, that or any of the sons are obedient to the father, and that son gets special privilege from the father because they follow the instructions given by the father and are dutiful. Those who don't, who wander away, the love is still there, but they don't get the full mercy and understanding that the father can give because they have rejected the father. So those who bring back the rejected children, and there's a famous song, a story called The Prodigal Son. It's quite a famous little parable about a rich man who's one of his sons leaves home, gives up his father, gives up his wealth, and starts wandering all around the world trying to live. But because he has nothing, he's suffering. He can't even get enough food every day. He has difficulty in living. He sometimes suffers because of ill health. But then one person who knows the father and him says to him, why are you wasting time? Just going on by you. Just go back to your father. He's wealthy. He'll take care of you nicely. You can live very happily. So that is the story of life, to bring back the fallen living entities in this material world who are wandering around, not knowing where they're going or why they're going, where they're going, and simply struggling unnecessarily. And so one who is in knowledge of the situation will try to assist the Supreme Lord in bringing back the conditioned souls. So it's not that one has to have, be highly educated in Shastric knowledge, as Lord Chaitanya gave the formula. Yare dake tari kaha krishna apudesh. Wherever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Wherever you meet, teach them to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that doesn't require great Shastric knowledge. It requires just some strong desire to please the Supreme Lord by bringing back the conditioned souls like that. <laughs> and uh, it's a, actually, it's a very difficult service in this age in the sense that people don't want it. But still, there are people who are looking for it. That's the thing. In this world, people are looking for what we have, but they don't know what to look for. Therefore, a lot of times they cannot recognize it when it comes upon them. And they seem to somehow or other lose the opportunity to take advantage of it. But in Lord Chaitanya's movement, he's made it very attractive. <laughs> you sing, you dance, you eat nicely and you read nice books and you associate with people who are nice, who are concerned about you and who can become uh, your friend and help you in so many ways. So the movement is very attractive. It's made easy by Lord Chaitanya. And therefore, one who can distribute this mercy in some way or another I remember when I was in Canada, we had a seminar in Montreal one time where one of the topics in the seminar was to uh, 
devise, or not devise, but to try to list as many ways as we could how the living entity can preach Krishna consciousness or how we can reach out. And we came up with more than 40 different ways by which someone can use their intelligence to reach out to others. So it's not just sitting in a pulpit and speaking philosophical knowledge. It's about just using your intelligence. And if you're connected to a temple, then you can see what preaching programs they have and connect to that. If you're not, then you can somehow connect yourself in that way. And if you're not able to do those two, then find some way you can do it from your home in different ways, through writing, through letters, through phone calls, through going out every day and distributing books on the street. There's just different, so many different ways that one can serve the Lord in the mood of compassion. So this is our movement. Our movement is a preaching movement. It's not a chapati flipping movement where we sit back and just enjoy the uh, and then talk about what we do all day. <laughs> That's not our <laughs> movement. Our movement is, as Prabhupada said, go out. <laughs> go out and save these conditioned souls. They're looking for it, but they don't know what they're looking for. <laughs> we have the answer and the results are always there there will always be people who will somehow or other come forward and take advantage of the mercy <laughs> okay we'll stop there <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much, Maharaj, uh, for such a beautiful class. Uh, Maharaj, you are talking about how we have to not just enjoy ourselves, Krishna consciousness, but we have to give it to others. So, so Maharaj, uh, as you said, you have to go out and we have to preach. Uh, so, so sometimes... Sometimes we cannot do that, but uh, this Bhakti Sangha platform is allowing us to give Krishna um, to others through the online. Is that considered uh, to be a seva, uh, a jivudaya? Uh, how how can I how can we see that, Maharaj? Well, <clears throat> for those of you, we got 68 pe 67 people listening online today, <laughs> so they're getting some benefit. And now as they get the benefit from hearing, they can go out and find 68 more people that they can benefit. In other words, take what you hear and go out and use it. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We have one raise hand. Shiva Kumar Prabhu, please go ahead with your question. Stop share screening. Bring it back. To sure, sure, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna, Mataji, and our friends. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances of your Lord Speak, Maharaj. Not one uh, scenario that I am seeing, Maharaj, in my experience. Um, it is a case with uh, some other devotees also. Uh, in my circle, Maharaj, be it my relatives or uh, colleagues or friends. When I kind of voluntarily talk about uh, Krishna Bhakti and the importance of spiritual life, uh, not many are interested. Um, when they go through some suffering or when they go through some misery, that's when they kind of come out with some interest, Maharaj. Even that, Maharaj, what I see in my observation, out of 10, only one comes out to me, Maharaj. Other nine tries to see some solution materially. Even the one, Maharaj, he comes, he or she comes, uh, shows interest and when the situation seems to be little stable then again goes back Maharaj so this kind of trend I am seeing it for past two or three years Maharaj so that kind of brings down the motivation to share Bhakti with others Maharaj I just wanted to hear your advice as to how can we keep up the motivation that's not the standard that may be your experience <laughs> mm -hmm. but generally people have to have an experience before they can actually move forward. And so we try to give them the experience. We invite them to the local temple where they can take part in the 
the spiritual activities there. That will help them get an experience like that. Just by talking to them is you're trying to plant some little seed there. But then again, just talking doesn't really change people. It may attract them to do something, but unless they do something, then it will nothing will change. So, you know, just carry mantra cards wherever you go. That's what mm -hmm. I do. And then when I meet mm -hmm. someone, I say, here, you chant this, you do chant this, this prayer here. It, it'll make you feel peaceful and you'll make you feel happy. These are names of the Lord. You can chant any time, any place, anywhere. No rules, no restrictions. Mm -hmm. Just you can carry mantra cards with you and then give them some something tangible or carry invitations to the temple, carry small books with you. When you meet someone, give them a book, talk about the book. Mm. It's got to be more like that. And when people, people are now are looking for what they call um, an experience and we can give them the experience, but we have to be able to bring them to where they can get that experience. I was sitting on the train. This was a, back in January and coming back from Radha Desh Mellows. And there was a lady sitting on the, across the way from me and just a few seats down on the opposite side. And she saw me and then she started to ask me who I was. And immediately I explained she talked about her personal life a little bit, and then I gave her a card and invited her to the temple, and I showed her how to chant. So walk around in a dhoti. Don't, don't just wear your ordinary clothes everywhere you go. Put a dhoti on it. <laughs> <laughs> then you can be seen as who you are. <laughs> We're not afraid of who we are. We're proud that we are somehow or other got the mercy of the Lord. Now we want to exhibit that in the way we live also. Hmm. If you're determined, you can preach. <laughs> So as you say, you know, you might preach to 10 people and one person comes. Good. Mm. And you preach to 20 people, you may get three or four. Mm. Don't give up. Mm. <laughs> Did Prabhupada give up? Prabhupada, when Prabhupada tried to cross the ocean, he didn't have any money. <laughs> he wasn't able to go. He couldn't buy an airline ticket. But he sat down in front of, you know, Sumerti Moriji's uh, uh, office steps and refused to leave until she gave him a ticket to cross the ocean. She told him, the reason I'm not giving it to you because you're old and the voyage will be too much for you. You'll get sick, you'll die. And even if you make it to America, what will you eat? You won't find any food there. You'll be all alone. She said, I'm not do I'm I'm not refusing to give you a ticket for your own benefit. But Prabhupada didn't want to hear that. <laughs> mm. He he sat there for three days and finally she submitted, gave him a ticket. <laughs> mm. So it takes a little determination mm. when you want to do something. Mm. Cut through the material energy and cut through all of the ignorance that surrounds. Mm. people in general. Mm. Like I said, people don't want it, but they're looking for it at the same time. The reason that they, they want they want something, but they don't know what they're, they're looking for. Mm. They want happiness. They want some peace. They want some freedom mm. from suffering. But they mm. don't know what it is or where to look for it. Mm. We have it. <laughs> That's for sure. Mm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I a detailed answer. I made a note of the points, Maharaj. Thank you.
हरे कृष्णा हेमी माता जी प्लीज गो हेड हरे कृष्णा महाराज धनवत प्रणाम महाराज आई हैव दिस क्वेश्चन दैट व्हेन वी आर ट्राइंग टू रीच इन माय केस आई बेसिकली ट्राई टू गिव सम बुक्स इफ आई कैन एंड इन माय पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस आई फील आई हैव द हेजिटेशन इन द सेंस दैट आई हैव दिस हेजिटेशन ऑफ रिजेक्शन इफ समबडी डज नॉट एक्सेप्ट इट सो आई काइंड ऑफ गो इन दिस कंफर्ट जोन आई I'll give it to a person who I I think will ninety percent chance that will take it. So how to empower or get that determination to kind of reach out to people and accept rejection? Um, how can I work on it, Pro? Don't be don't be don't be discouraged by rejection. Was Prabhupada discouraged when he failed? He failed so many times, but he was never discouraged. <laughs> he kept going. <laughs> He found. He finally found his way in, and then things expanded. Determination has to be applied to giving Krishna consciousness to others because you're fighting against the material energy. You're fighting against people's ignorance of their wrong conceptions of life. So don't be discouraged. <laughs> discouraged, then you're defeated. <laughs> yes. You know, for example, this is a material example. <laughs> I I forgot. There's two. One of one is uh, one is uh, what was it? I think it was Google. Person who created Google. Who was that? Jobs. What's his name? Steve Jobs or something. Steve Jobs is is Apple Maharaj. I think he created Apple. Apple. No, Apple. Apple. Well, I think it was Google. I'm not sure one of them. But anyway, the person who started it, he had so many, so many defeats. He couldn't get off the ground, but he kept going. Finally, he got a breakthrough. <laughs> and then when he got a breakthrough, everything started to develop. <laughs> so yeah. Don't be discouraged. If you know what's right, and you just simply have to figure out ways, you know, somehow to reach people. Talking to them is one thing. You're know, bringing them into an experience that culminates or consummates the whole thing. You bring them to a a temple, to a kirtan program, to your house, and have a pro have a pro have programs in your house. Invite people to come. <clears throat> There was one devotee. He moved into a new neighborhood, a neighborhood he didn't know, and within the radius of two city blocks around him, this was more like a rural area. He went to every house, introduced himself as the the new neighbor in the area, and and welcomed everyone to come over his house. For for dinner, and people came, <laughs> and then they came, and he introduced them to Krishna consciousness. <laughs> We got our Sri Devi there; she'll go out with a pair of car tows, all alone in a park, and start singing, and then people will come and say, "What what's this lady doing?" And then after she sings for a while, she gives out some cookies, and then she starts meeting people like that, invites them to the temple. She does it alone. <laughs> When she was in America, that was. <laughs> so yeah, that's how they think Prabhupada started the movement. It wasn't easy. No, you just just don't give up. That's all. <laughs> just try different ways. You see, some people will take, and some people won't. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Krishna said that to the to the uh, cowherd boys when he sent the cowherd boys to beg food from the Brahmins. 
the Romans completely ignored the cowherd boys and didn't even want to look at them. They were so absorbed in their puja. And they came back to, to Krishna and said, well, <laughs> we couldn't, you know, we didn't get anything. Well, Krishna said, well, that's the nature of begging. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. <laughs> so he said, now you go to the, with the wives of the Brahmins and beg from them. And when they did, they were successful. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. I'll work on it. Thank you. Tanvat Pranam. Just be positive. If you're negative, then negativity will defeat you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answer. Maharaj, I was also thinking, Srimati Morarji uh, was thinking that Prabhupada will, what he will eat, and now Prabhupada is feeding millions through, you know, through Sunday feast all around the world. <laughs> he changed the, changed the destiny completely. Yeah, Thank you, Maharaj. Feeding the whole world. <laughs> yeah, the whole world is being fed by Srila Prabhupada. So true, Maharaj. So true. Not, but not only the bellies, but also the, you know, spiritual uh, understandings. Millions of people are being benefited. Maharaj, so Shilpa Mataji is there. Hare Krishna Mataji, you know what now? You can go ahead, Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanwat Pranam. Dhanwat Pranam. Uh, thank you, Pro thank you, Maharaj. Um, great class. I, I have um, I have two questions, Maharaj. One of it, um, when, the, when there's a situation where congregation is go growing, no temple, and... Um, um, few new devotees are attracted to to the way that um, we are um, we are uh, following Prabhupada's instructions, and they come to us. But uh, they are pretty new, um, so at times we feel like, uh, uh, okay, they are very enthusiastic, correct? But there are kind of limitations also because they don't know um, they don't exactly know or they are trying to learn uh, on how to be in the path of, of Prabhupada's mission, right? And at that time, is that considered as judgmental from my point of view? Or, um, you know, we, we want to guide them in a right way. Um, at the same time, we don't want to discourage them. Uh, so am I being judgmental at this point? Well, you have to judge according to what is best. <clears throat> it's not judgmental. It's like using your intelligence to <clears throat> understand how to help them. That's not judgmental. If you see there's some deficiency or some lack of faith, then you you say, all right, you can understand that's there, and then you will work with that. But it's not judgmental means when you... Um, the word actually applies when you see something that another person is doing and you judge him without understanding the situation. That's judgmental, without understanding the person. And you don't do anything beyond that. But we do things. We might see things and make an estimation based on that, and then we try to do something. That's not judgmental. That's that's natural to help the person. <laughs> Got it, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, one more, Maharaj, if you have time. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Um, same situation. Congregation is growing, and I'm not to the level with the shastra or so, but just following the devotees around, uh, Prabhupada reading, chanting, um, and uh, book distribution, and so forth. Now, uh, when we come across a new devotee who's at attracted to the way that we are doing, at, at what point, uh, uh, at, point, at what point from, from your experience, I should, um, I should um, attach them to a, to a senior devotee? At what time? That can be done at any time. And to introduce them to senior devotees at any time doesn't mean there'll be anything more than that. They can hear from that just by being in the presence of a uh, devotee who is fixed in Krishna consciousness. 
they'll experience something because that energy is there, that consciousness is there. It's good if they hear from that person or if they get the chance to uh, associate and do some service, it's all beneficial. We devotees were associating with Prabhupada from the very beginning. <laughs> so it wasn't like, you know. And then, of course, as the movement got bigger, it became a little harder for each person. But still, Prabhupada made others qualified so they could also be the association. But yeah, there's no time limit on that. You can do that anytime, even from the very beginning. Yeah, the the devotees that I come came across are the ones that I'm referring. They don't have any. They're just attracted to kirtan. Uh, they're coming to the program with for prasadam. So mercy is there, but um, not much into you know inclining, uh, continue inclined to chant or something like that. Very early stage. We attract people through kirtan through prasadam. And then we have classes to give them transcendental knowledge or education in the philosophy. That's that's a principle that should be adopted. Yeah. You may start with just kirtan, chanting, uh, prasadam, nice association with others. But then you have classes and you invite them, just like Bhagavad Gita study classes or you know, classes on the on the Srimad Bhagavatam, Nectar Devotion. Now, after a person is coming for some time, then you can in invite them to these different classes and hold the classes anyway, whether people come or not. And then some people will come. And once they get to, into the philosophy, then they become fixed. <laughs> so... Yeah, and then they become more inclined to do service. So it's a progression. It starts with the holy name, with prasadam. These are the these are the attractive features, but they're the process itself too. They attract, but they also are the process. But what what solidifies a person's commitment is knowing the philosophy, and then we we present that knowledge in a systematic way through various types of uh, seminars, classes, like that. And then they can come and learn. Mm -hmm. That has to be there. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, that's the that's the place where much of the devotees drop down. They like the Kirtan Prashadam, but when it gets to philosophy, um, that uh, it's but slowly. But yeah. if, if they stay for a while and and chant and associate with devotees, and then they'll start get interested in, in the philosophy. For some, it's quick, and for some, it takes longer. Mm -hmm. Got it, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much for your association. Haribo. Thank you. Anwad Pranam. Thank you, Mataji. Very beautiful and practical questions that uh, all can use the answer. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answer. Maharaj Shri Devi Mataji is there too. Hare Krishna Mataji, then You can unmute Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. Dear Guru Maharaj and dear devotees, please accept my most humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for giving us so much practical tips on how to preach to people. Sometimes we find it so much easier to approach people just on the street or in subways, trains, metros, etc., and they are very receptive. They hear everything. They sometimes even will take a book, ask questions and all. But our own family will absolutely be uh, in a state of, uh, you know, denial that you are even a Hare Krishna. For example, my own daughter, she's a grown-up girl. She's very favorable. She likes Krishna. Every second sentence, she will say Krishna, Krishna. But that's it. She will just do her own thing. She will not take the process seriously enough to get initiated or chant 16 rounds just little chanting little this little that like that and i cannot say anything because she's a big girl now okay give her time okay 
you're still young. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. This happens to all of us, I think. Everyone is in the same boat. Ghar ki murgi dal barabar, you know, that, 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 that goes there. They don't, they don't care for us, right? Even though they love us, but we continue talking of Krishna and then they neglect us. Maharaj, it has been 10 years I am using Google, but I never really Googled who invented Google. So today I, I googled who invented Google and that was Larry Page. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for bringing him up. He is being now, I think, purified because you took his name. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. There's many persons who have failed tremendously in their attempts, but continued on and were True. successful by their determination. Because when you're determined to do something, you bring in so many other forces of support. If your determination is weak, then you can't actually see or actually have enough resources. If, you're, if, you, if you refuse to be defeated, you will succeed. <laughs> so true, Maharaj. So true. So true. Utsa, Nishche, and Dharyat, you told it, Maharaj, in the last class. So true, Maharaj. We should be there with determination. Yeah. And Maharaj, you were telling this is uh, not easy. And in fact, you were, I think it was Maharaj, you or some other class I was listening. It is not compatible. You know, we are in material world. We are trying to get uh, Krishna, which is spiritual. So it is uh, very difficult. But yeah. thanks to Srila Prabhupada and all the Guru Varga Maharaj, we are just there to, to fight with this material world and then keep doing our sadhana. Maharaj also, Re Revati Mataji, sorry Maharaj. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Revati Mataji is also saying that uh, on the train from Belgium, Radhadesh, there were like, you know, devotees dancing in the gopi dresses and the dhotis. And then everybody was attracted and asking questions like, what is this? And uh, so we should go ahead in our uh, attire that Srila Prabhupada told us. And then somebody might be attracted, Maharaj. So true, Maharaj. That's when people see. You, yeah, there's always benefit if you go out on the streets and do Harinam. Some people will be attracted, others won't. <laughs> true, Maharaj, true. Benefit. And the benefit is in in the persons who perform it, too. They get the most benefit. <laughs> true, Maharaj. Like police has their dress, Maharaj, and we recognize them. This tilak is our trademark, and people will maybe recognize us. Hey, Iskwan devotees are there. <laughs> Maharaj, we have... Yes, Maharaj. Beautiful, Maharaj. Maharaj, we have Darshini Mataji there too. Darshini Mataji, Hare Krishna, Dhanvat Pranam, Darshan do. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanvat Pranam, so all the Rishishir of Prabhupada, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Maharaj, you know, I had this question, like, you know, when it comes to preaching and sharing things with others, like, you know, first is we should have something to share, right? Like, you know, in the beginning days of Krishna consciousness, we are like very enthusiastic and, you know, we are absorbing all that we are hearing. But as time passes, you know, the ability to hear and retain genuinely goes away. Like, you know, after one point of time, we are hearing, but we are not retaining what we are hearing. So, what do, like, you know, what do we actually see to it that, you know, we retain what we hear, we relish it and then share it. Like, you know, because otherwise it's just going to go like some, you know, talk or, you know, it's just going to be very dry. You know, that person will not get inspired because they should feel that we are relishing and we are happy in this process. Only then they will take up. Otherwise, they'll think they are already in problems. And this is also sounding more dry. So I was just uh, wanting to know. I don't think Krishna consciousness is dry. I think it's pretty juicy. <laughs> I don't know if we, if you, if you perceive it as dry and you deliver it in the same way, it'll seem like that. But if you want to stay enlivened in Krishna consciousness, then preach. That's how you stay enlivened. And when you're enlivened, you enliven other people. <laughs> it says, this is the statistics they did in the U.S. People remember 5% of what they hear, 10% of what they, uh, what they, no, 5% of what they hear, 10% of what they read. What is it? 20%, 30% of what they hear and see together. 
of, I don't know, 70 percent of what they do, and people remember 90 percent of what they teach. So if you want to remember things, teach. <laughs> If you if you just take in the knowledge and don't give it back, it's like a it's like a it's the, the analogy is given in the Krishna book. It's like a clay pot with a crack in it. It's filled with water, but because there's a crack, the water seeps out. So whatever knowledge you have, if you want to keep it, expand it, then give it. If you just try to keep it, you forget it, you lose it, and then you become dry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mara. Very grateful to you for this answer. So we can relish only when we preach. We can yeah. relish what we're hearing and reading only when we preach. Yeah, we call it preaching, teaching, showing compassion. There's different names. Just somehow or other waking people up to the fact that, you know, there's a way out of their suffering. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much, Mara. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Hari Hari. Thank you, Mataji. Giving Krishna to others, that's the formula then from Guru Maharaj. Perfect. Thank you, Maharaj. Vinita Mataji, Hare Krishna, Dhanavat Parana Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I just wanted to share one realization regarding uh, Sushilpa Mataji's question about uh, not listening to the philosophy and when philosophy time comes, they just go away. Uh, I, I want to share my personal experience when I... Uh, came into Krishna consciousness. Um, I was okay with the Kirtan. I was okay with Prasad and everything. But once they start Bhagavad Gita class, they distribute Bhagavad Gita to everyone. As soon as they start distributing Bhagavad Gita, I just jump away from there. That was my situation initially. And then um, slowly after I increased my chanting, then I got taste for that philosophy. Otherwise, it was, I was like, oh my God, what they're explaining. I couldn't understand anything. And I was just going away. It took me a lot of time. Uh, I just want to share my experience, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Very nice. Yeah. If you keep the chanting going, then you'll eventually start to uh, become interested in the philosophy. At least you'll become curious enough to get some exposure to it. Maharaj, 16 rounds and Ekadasi only helped me to understand and at least touch Bhagavad Gita and read something from it. Until and, and that, I was just most focused on Kirtan and Prasadam. That too was only I was interested in. Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's a process. If you stay with it, it, gets, it, it grows. Haribo, Haribo. Mataji, I'm glad they, they keep continue forcing you for that Bhagavad Gita because now today we have a Vanita Gandharvika Mataji who is there in all the classes, who is preaching and who is putting Shila Prabhupada's quotes every morning. And I, Mataji, I copy that quotes from your quotes. Thank you, Mataji, for being with us. Maharaj, there is Champaklata Mataji also there with her hand raised. Mataji, if you're driving, please be very careful. <laughs> Yes, Prabhu, thank you so much. Um, uh, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, thank you so much for such a wonderful class. Maharaj, I have a question besides uh, preaching. Um, all this time, I did not really encounter so much of the problem with this issue, but uh, I'm noticing last one or two months, I'm getting carried over by anger. It's affecting a lot. Like uh, my tolerance has gone down quite a bit. And I seem to be shaken up very fast on smallest things, whether it is in the house, whether it's outside, whether everywhere. So how do I overcome this, Maharaj? It's affecting my spiritual life also. It's just, just recently started to develop? Yes, Maharaj. Actually, before many, many years of Krishna consciousness, like 12 years back, I was an angry person. But then... Uh, it 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 really did not affect me past many years, but last two months I would say that uh, I can see a huge change in myself, and for smallest thing I'm very angry. 
doing and work. i forget being humble and tolerant now i don't remember past two months maybe you should check your astrological reading maybe you're going through a difficult period that's all <laughs> it'll pass <laughs> it will pass is there something which i can do or remember or anything which i can check my anger right away it says that there's three things you can use your anger against <laughs> one you can use your anger against yourself when you're lazy if you see yourself being lazy get angry at yourself that's one <laughs> two you can be angry at family members who try to stop you to perform krishna consciousness and three you can be angry at the demons for causing so much trouble in the world <laughs> So these three statements are made by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, who gives the formula for how anger can be exhibited. So if you have that anger element directed towards one of these three. <laughs> no, I just completely directed towards all different directions and sense gratification. Well, then, then it's then you realize it's wrong. Then, when you feel like that, talk to somebody who you feel can can help you. Okay. Nice to to express your feelings, so they don't overwhelm you. And then, when you talk it out with someone, you find that there's sometimes there's answers, solutions, and just by talking, sometimes that's the solution. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah. when I'm getting angry, Maharaj, is there something I can quickly, immediately remember and control my anger right away? Well, if you can, uh, they say if you're feeling the anger starting to rise, just stop and don't, don't do anything, don't say anything, and just count to ten. <laughs> In other words, okay. just, you know, don't allow it to grow. Anger is the younger brother of desire. So when desires are unfulfilled, just like if you have expectations upon yourself or others, and they are not fulfilled, you can also experience anger. If you have desires that are frustrated, then you also may also experience some form of anger. Yeah. So we can understand one thing, the world doesn't work according to our, our plan. <laughs> we have to figure out we have to work with Krishna and with the spiritual master. We can't think that we, because we want something to happen or something not to happen, it's going to, it should be like that. It's, it's just not the way the world works. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I will uh, follow your advice and uh and try my best now to get out of this situation. St. Francis, the great saint in the Christian tradition, he said, my dear Lord, uh, let me understand the things I can change, and let me understand the things I can't change, and let me understand the difference between the two. <laughs> Some things in your life you can make a difference, others you can't, and to know the difference between the two. <laughs> That's a prayer by St. Francis. <laughs> Understood, Maharaj. Thank you so much. It's it's uh, really helpful to me. I really, I'm very grateful to you for helping. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good question. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful, uh, beautiful answer, Maharaj. If we can control our anger for that even first 10 seconds, Sometimes it can create a beautiful environment around us, you know, around the family too. And beautiful Maharaj, you said the uh, word is not making made according to our desires and that will crush our ego part too, Maharaj, if we try to control our anger and think uh, this is what it is. It's beautiful, the beautiful. It's the reality. We are not the controller. <laughs> we, are, we are not the controllers, Maharaj. True, Maharaj. We are dasa, dasa, nudasa. Maharaj... Uh, is that Sushilpa Mataji again? Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, do you have a question again, Mataji? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, yes, Prabhuji, if we still have time. Otherwise, uh, I'll. Up to Maharaj, yes, Maharaj. 
Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj is uh, there, yes, please. One follow-up question, Maharaj, um, for, for on preaching. Um, now, preaching to Western bodies. Just want to know when to introduce chanting to Western bodies. So I have good friends. Um, we we set up uh, Kirtan and Prashadam at yoga studios, um, which they enjoy. But they, uh, And then um, few congregation members, uh, Western bodies in the congregation members, um, mention it would be it could be overwhelming for the western bodies who are coming to the yoga studio may not um, be may not be as um, as um, what what's the right word they may not be uh, capturing much if they come to the festivals and programs home programs um, it it should be different for them. So they know the Harinam, they know the Mahamantra, but not chanting. So what, 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 from your experience, when is the best time to introduce chanting, Maharaj? Uh, well, it depends on your audience. And you have to be able to, to observe and see. But I, if you're going to yoga studios, <clears throat> And you're doing some kind of obviously you're chanting at the yoga studio, right? <laughs> Correct. Yes, Maharaj. Kirtan Prashadam chanting. Yeah, perfect. That's what we do. We have um, there's a lot of programs that I attend in different places, especially in the UK. We have uh, programs we with yoga studios, yoga t yoga students, and we say we tell them this is bhakti yoga. It's mantra yoga. It's yoga. It's yeah, definitely yoga, but it's it's another kind of form of yoga. There was one devotee who who became a yoga teacher, and then he and Gay he brought all people in under hatha yoga. But then when he brought them in under hatha yoga, he was teaching them different exercises, and for each exercise he had a different chant. For one exercise, it was. Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopal Jaya Jaya. Another one was, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Well, he used different mantras for each of the exercises. And then he had one mantra for the Hare Krishna exercise too. <laughs> so he, he, you know, it's like going, going in like a needle and then coming out like a plow. <laughs> Was that Maharaj? I missed it. Uh, going in like needle and coming out, like a plow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that means go in carefully, and then, then when you get in, just give it, give it everything. <laughs> Wonderful. Don't be afraid of discouraging people. Some people will just be discouraged anyway, but some will not. <laughs> Got it, Maharaj. So time, place, circumstance, and I think and I think you're going to do, introduce the chanting at even from the very beginning. Haribo. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very very beautiful class and very nice instruction for preaching. Thank you so much. Uh, Shamagori, I, I have one question for you. Yes, Maharaj. I sent a letter to your good husband. Yes. And he hasn't answered in three or four days now. <laughs> oh, really? I thought he did. Because yeah. he showed me the email and uh, uh, we said, yeah, it's okay. The dates are good for us. Well. Yeah. We would like to see. We are waiting for you, Maharaj. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd like to receive a response from him to confirm everything. Yes, yes. You, he will say, Maharaj, I let him know. Okay, Balabhadra. Hari Bol, Maharaj, beautiful class. Shamagori Mataji, now you have a task to tell your husband <laughs> to, to, to send to Maharaj. Maharaj, it is so beautiful. It is so true, Maharaj, that needle and plow example. I think this, uh, we all have seen this in Iskon temples. We go there and then there is a devotee 
and he says are hare krishna prabhu ji it's your first time here and you say oh yes yes i'm being cared for you know hare krishna and then they will give you one mala which is there and may prabhu ji maybe you can start doing hare krishna and then we start doing hare krishna and then they invite you on sunday feast and then they ask you all of a sudden are have you ever attend mangal aarti and you say who is going to wake up at 4 am but then you go and do it because of love of devotees and how krishna is being you know inserted into you it is that needle to flow maharaj and then one day you know you are inspired to get initiation and uh, and on a path of bhakti so beautiful maharaj we all have been there and i think that's a beautiful process thank that's you. a beautiful very nice thank you thank you dear devotees uh it is getting late so everybody please unmute themselves let us favor of humble obeisance to maharaj and all the assembled vaishnavas here vancha kalapadu vancha kalapadu sindhuki vidyutika nam pavani namo namah prabhate swagatam ki holy mass namo namah ji jai jai